What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Once again, let's talk about it. This is a Carcino hood story. I think we had 13 or something or whatever it is. Um, well, we've all had friends in different situations and time, you know. And some people, they're not your friends. they just associates. You know them. So, number one night, we just decide me and a couple of friends and some associates to go into the club. Now, this chick I was trying to get out with, I was meeting her there, you know. Some circumstances happened, and I couldn't even I think it was a baby shower or something. That stopped me from closing the deal <laughs> one night, and I said, man, this is the night we're supposed to rectify all problems. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to meet y'all up there at the bar or whatever everybody was hanging up at. So I get up there. And, you know, her friends, everybody else there. And this is like places like Cheers, you know, like everybody know your name. So every time you come in there, it's always going to be somebody else you know walk in. And it's, hey! Now nobody called each other and said, hey, guess what? We going to meet up there. You know, so this is like the normal meeting ground for people. So people go up there, you know, they take pictures. And and this is back before, like, this is like during MySpace days. So, you know, pictures will pop up on MySpace or something like that. And that was the extent of how far things went. And this is back when MySpace was just coming, like, into prominence. And what happened at that time? Because people still was on, like, BlackPlanet.com. But, man, what happened that... Oh, yeah, Mike Prince got involved. Now, Mike Prince is the guy that could be in every neighborhood you know. He's the guy that's flamboyant, got the brand-new gym shoes, got the plants nice iron and crease, got the new coat, new fresh lining, Got it lined up to sideburns. That guy in your neighborhood who has no money in his pocket. <laughs> he looked like a million dollars, but he got no money in his pocket. Everything he got, he got from a chick. A chick is paying for all that. That's Mike Prince. So now you know that type of guy. <laughs> and that's Mike Prince. So Mike Prince, smooth talker, he comes over with his waves and sweet talking somebody and trying to be a hustler. Now, now, knowing the fact that I have Latino friends and my black friends, now sometimes they don't mesh and sometimes they all cool, you know, so one big pot, everybody know each other. That's cool. Now, if they was to get into a beef, that don't involve me, I don't get involved. I'm like, don't involve me in this because y'all beef is between y'all two. This have nothing to do with me. Y'all settle it like men. Don't involve other people that ain't got nothing to do with it. But see, Mike Prince don't follow those type of rules. He wants to involve everybody into his beefs and even fight for him. That's the kind of guy he is. So what happened was Mike Prince got involved in something with this other guy, the Latino guy, who we not going to mention his name. <laughs> no, we can't. His name is, um, God, doggy, what is it? Oh, Jaime. Okay. Jamie, an American, but it's Jaime. So anyway. His girlfriend is Yolanda. And Yolanda is crazy. You know, she's like to the core, tattooed up, ready to bang. You know, fight dudes in the streets type chick. So, we up in the club. Mike Prince is in there. Like later, because this is what happened. Earlier, like a few weeks prior to this incident... Mike Prince and Jaime got involved in 
God knows what. I didn't want to know. Still don't want to know. I don't know to this day. But whatever it was they got involved in, something happened where they both got arrested. And they were locked up. So Jaime's locked up. Mike Prince is locked up. All of a sudden, I didn't know this. I didn't know any of this had transpired. So it's not like people was coming up sharing information at the time. So Mike Prince comes over to the club. I don't think nothing of it. And to other people who was there showed up, other people I'm cool with, my boys, they decided to mention, yo, what's up, Mike? What's going on, Mike? What's up, Big Mike? Man, when you get out? And I'm, that's when I'm like, whoa, Mike Prince was locked up. How did that happen? Like, Mike Prince doing something like to get himself in that position? So they, what's up, Mike? You know, what's, so, whoa, 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 this and that. So he, ah, oh, nothing going on, this and that, and all type of craziness. So he was, ah, oh, man, you know, they ain't had nothing on me. They had to let me go and, and such and such. So the whole night going crew, you know, he's sitting there, people buying shots, they toasting. You know, everything going cool with me and old girl. And I was just talking about like, man, you know, we can go. I got, we can get a room at the Radisson. We can go after this. We all good. And everything is like cool. All right. And here comes Yolanda and her friends up in there. And she comes into place. She sees everybody. Everybody, oh, hey, what's up, Yolanda? And then she go over there with her friends and she pulls a couple of them to the side. And she starts talking and to uh, like the group and everything. And I noticed that uh what's his name ain't really talking to her. Or, you know, just like he's like, oh, what's up? And she just looked at him like she saw a ghost and like she wanted to punch him in the face. So the whole night go through and she came through near the like near the end. But then everybody get outside, you know, everybody going home. We all in the parking lot and she just burst out like, and everybody was there and they was like, yeah, Mike, why don't you tell him how you ratted on Jamie? You know, uh, Jaime, why you ratted on Jaime? What? He's like, what you talking about? Yeah, you told on him. They got paperwork and everything. His lawyer got everything. You signed the paperwork. You a snitch. You a snitch. You a punk ass snitch. She was going off on him, so everybody like, you 5-0. <laughs> you know, it was, then it got serious, because everybody around him like, whoa, dude. You telling? Yeah, it all would make sense if this dude telling. He like, man, everybody listening to your drug ass bitch. You drug ass, man. Can't take your ass on. Take your ass on. So, in the middle of all his yelling and all this stuff, and he went over there and talked to his certain little crew that was part of his, like, clique. They were there, too. So, that he came in where he was, like, told them, like, yeah, I told on that nigga, man, fuck him. Fuck that nigga. I don't care if he's, well, he's just in there in line, man. I got out because they ain't got nothing on me. I ain't did nothing. That's why they had to let me go. I got a lawyer. And he ain't had no lawyer. <laughs> but Jaime's lawyer had the paperwork that he signed. Giving testimony to what happened and saying blaming everything on Jaime. So Jaime was in the joint. <laughs> and he called and told his girl what happened. And was like, yeah, my lawyer and this and that. So she didn't think this. He didn't even think for a minute that like, why are you even hanging around? When she knows all this, and he, you come out to the spot kicking it like it's all good, telling everybody, like, Jaime wasn't going to contact somebody. Yolanda was in contact with all of us. And he, I guess he didn't know, and it just slipped his mind, or he wasn't thinking. But when he saw her, he knew something that wasn't a good sign. And when she looked at him, he, she knew he knew. And he told. And then when uh, Jaime got out, he's like, don't know. 
I don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to deal with it because she tried to fight him out there. And then he trying to fight her. Girl, you need to take your ass home and trying to punch her in the face and people breaking it up. And then the girl on which she's getting involved and was like getting in his face. What you doing? Don't you try to hit no, no female? You a punk. You trying to hit. And then she like, you got to get in there. So I'm like, I don't get involved in stuff that don't concern me. This is not my problem. <laughs> Hey, you trying to hit Yolanda? She's, that's not my problem. They got security at this place. I'm not finna get involved in this situation. I'm trying to stay out. So she like, what are you doing? You supposed to be a man. You don't let no man beat up on no one. I'm like, look, they fighting. She got her friends here. They got everybody. They got enough people here that want to get involved. Let them. I am not finna get involved in this situation that don't concern me. And you shouldn't either. And now you making yourself part of the situation. And that's why we got to stay here longer. So then he tells me, I need to control my bit. You got to control your bit, man. But I'm going to knock all these homes out out here. That's straight up, man. You know me. I said, look, let's leave. Because I don't need to be involved in a situation that don't need to be. You causing a situation to get out of hand. See those guys over there? See, that's the Cook County Sheriff. They ain't going to handle the situation from here on out. Old Kev ain't got nothing to do with it. Oh, you just going to sit there? Oh, you, man, I ain't, you just going to punk out. Man, take me home. I'm like, take you home? I ain't bring you here. You can take your car and go to the crib. I'm going home then. I ain't going nowhere with you. I can't believe you let them talk to me like that. Hey, this a free world. I'm not going to get in an argument with this dude. This dude, Roland, just got out of jail for snitching. I'm finna go to war with him and go to jail over something stupid. Mm -mm, this ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm sitting out. Old Cal sitting this one on out. So come to find out, <laughs> old Jaime's finna get out on bail. <laughs> Jaime gets out on bail. She gets Jaime out of jail. He comes home, find out he tried to swing on him. Jaime gets out. Goes right to the house, gets a gun, gets a knife, just like, called up his guys, come pick me up. Come pick me up. I'm going to find him. Well, y'all, y'all seen him at, he came to here, he went to the store. Don't nobody tell him I'm home. I'm finna find him, because I know where he's going to pop up. So Mike Press was in trouble. What happened after that, I don't know. I'm just saying, Mike Prince found out, he got out. All of a sudden, Mike Prince was gone. Like, he like Jaime never ran into him. He got little. He got out of the situation. Now, I see the guy on Facebook. Like, he came back around. But during that situation, he had to blow. <sighs> he got wind. Like, oh, dude, home? Pack my bags. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to blow, man. I'm going to be over here, man. I'm going to go visit my peoples for a while. They need me. My auntie's sick. <laughs> and got out of town see me that's why I don't hang out with people like that I knew that guy is that way that's why I don't associate he's an associate I know him I say hey what's up and I keep it moving we have no business with each other me and Mike Prince have no business with nothing to do he just know people that I know He's an associate. That's why I told her, don't even get involved in that. You're involving yourself in a situation that don't need to be. Let the other people, she got people with her, let them deal with that. This don't have nothing to do with old Kev. <laughs> I knew Jaime better than I knew him. And I knew when Jaime found him, what would probably happen to him. So, that's just another story. Of many that happens in the hood. <laughs> I'm out. Hope you enjoyed it.